wait a couple more seconds and oh it actually generated an ai image of the route path that's not that no so google just dropped a new ai tool called opal it's all node based ai assisted drag and drop natural language no code tool which lets you create what google calls mini apps it lets you chain together prompts ai models and other tools into ready to use apps and you just have to describe what you want and it all fills that for you from a single text prompt and on paper it sounds pretty powerful but is it though? So in this video, we're gonna poke around Opal, see if it actually does anything useful, and find out if Opal is secretly a brilliant prototyping tool for devs, or just another tool soon to be featured in killedbygoogle.com. So at its core, Opal is Google's attempt to simplify the way people build apps with AI turning abstract ideas into functional workflows without needing to set up APIs, host backends, or touch code at all for that matter. You describe your idea and Opal turns it into a visual workflow of AI calls, tools, and prompts, all editable in natural language or with drag and drop features. Now, what I am most interested in is finding out how much control do we have over these nodes? Can we also bind it together with other Google APIs? So that's what I'm gonna be looking into as we test it out. First thing you see when you arrive on their webpage are the sample apps that you can start with that the Google team has built for us. As you can see, you can have an app that transforms you into a claymation character or make a YouTube playlist for you. But we're just gonna go ahead and create our own app from scratch. So when we open the builder, we see a bunch of tools here. Add a step to get started or type what you want to build. As an example, I'm going to try to create a traffic planner app where you input your source and destination addresses and the app outputs information about your route, like potential closures or traffic jams or other traffic related useful information. And I also want to test if Opal can connect us with other Google APIs, in this case being the Maps API to find relevant route information. So I want to ask it to use the Google Maps API if possible. And as an output, I want it to generate an image of the route so you can visualize how to get there along with valuable textual information about the route. Let's see if Opal can get this right. Okay, right from the bat, I see that it generated a node-based flow. We can see that we have two inputs followed by what I assume is a prompt to get details about the route. And as you can see, it will search the web, search maps and get weather information and then summarize the journey details. Okay, cool, so far so good. Next, we have the summary node. And here we have this long text prompt with an explanation to Gemini, how to process the data. I love how they always crap these agent prompts with text like, you're an expert at. What if I told the model, you're mediocre at something? I wonder what the result would be. <laughs> anyway, um, down here, I see that it will try to generate a route map image. Cool, cool. Again, we see that we have another expert working for us. This one is an expert image prompt generator. Focus on clear visual representation, incorporate visual elements such as roads, landmarks, and the overall path into the prompt. I'm honestly really curious what it will come up with. All right, and then we have this next node, and I assume this generates the actual image. As you can see, it uses a model called Imogen4, and we also get this warning that image generation has limited free quota. And the last node is our output node where it will show us all the results in an HTML web page. Okay, cool. One thing to note here, it claims that you will get real time traffic updates, which is totally not true. So we can see that some of the details are clearly hallucinated by Gemini, but okay. I'll give them a pass on that. Also, it's kind of annoying that it came up with the description but couldn't come up with a fitting title. So I'm just gonna rename this app Traffic Predictor. Okay, now we can go ahead and try our app right here in the preview mode. So first we're presented with this free text input field. Let's type in Wall Street in New York as our starting point. And let's choose, I don't know, Brooklyn Heights as our destination. We can see now the flow in action, indicating what the app is doing at the current state. Let's wait a couple more seconds and, oh. Oh, look at that. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's not, oh God. It actually generated an AI image of the route path. 
that's not that no okay at least the journey details look somewhat okay we get a detailed information about the potential road closure cool cool but that's basically it. I thought it would give me at least a time estimate or give me ideas for public transportation options. Kind of disappointing. All right, let's see. We also have a theme tab here. Let's see what that does. I believe it will generate a new HTML theme for the page layout, right? Let's try it out. Okay, it generated this icon with a red ball, but it doesn't seem to change anything nothing changes if I toggle between these two buttons what what is the point of that oh is that it did it just create a new thumbnail image for my app that is the theme I don't even know what to say all right so clearly the output was subpar but I still want to give it another chance let's see if I can actually force opal to give me a google maps route image instead of generating an ai illustration so this time I'm going to be more precise and ask it to actually use Google Maps API to generate the image. Okay, let's see what it changed. Oh great, now it's an expert at geospatial data and API utilization. Your goal is to construct a URL that accurately displays the route map between the specified source and destination addresses. Formulate the base URL from the Google Maps Static API. Oh yeah, that's what it's called. That's right. It's called Google Maps Static API, yes. Okay, so at least it intuitively knows what I'm asking for. So I'm happy with that. With those changes, let's try running the app again. This time, let's go from the Empire State Building to Battery Park, for example. All right, let's see. The image is broken. That's a bummer. But look at that, this time we got a far more specific description of the route. Oh wow, it even has time estimates and public transit options. I mean, I didn't change anything in the summary prompt. Why didn't it give it such a detailed overview the first time? What's up, Opal? I guess this just shows how vaguely the LLM output can vary between iterations if you don't give it a consistent seed value. Okay, but I do want to see what is happening with the image. So let's inspect the element. It appears it does have a valid URL, but... Oh, okay, I see the problem. Your API key. Got it. Anyway, so I created a dedicated API key for this. I'll try to suggest Opal to use my valid key instead. And since some of you were noting in the previous video that I should not show my actual API key in the video, although we always rotate them, this time I will obfuscate the key with this beautiful image of a neon cat. There we go. That's much better, isn't it? Okay. It seems like it did apply the change. Okay. So let's try the app one more time. Let's do the same route. Okay, once again, the image is not showing up, but we do get the same detailed information about the route. That's good, at least. Let's see what happens if I open the image in a new tab. Oh, look at that, the image works. So the generated image was correct and the API key was valid as well. Looking at the console log, it seems like there's a content security policy directive in place that restricts it from showing up. Oh, well. Since I can't edit the HTML, I guess there's nothing I can do about that in the moment. Well, that's a bummer. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to know was how it could actually share the app or reuse it somewhere else. Can it actually embed the app in other web pages or access the code underneath? And to my disappointment, there was no option to embed this app just a plain URL you could share. And I even tried opening this URL in an incognito window to see if it's publicly accessible. But even that was not possible. I was redirected back to the main product page. So what is the point of sharing it? Who can you even share this app with? So another disappointing thing, unfortunately. Okay, so here's my honest review about this. All in all, it was a very, very, very disappointing experience. I understand that at this point, Opal is just an experimental tool and it does not have many features as of now, but I do believe to make this product usable, it needs a more precise way to tweak the nodes or add or remove instructions or ideally access the code underneath them. And lastly, there should be an option to embed this app into other existing web applications, or ideally provide some kind of an API layer. Otherwise, I find this product 
kind of useless at the moment. I know that the target audience for these apps are primarily no-code enthusiasts, but even no-coders would still benefit from having more control over the nodes. Honestly, if Google wants to get ahead of the big vibe coding tools out there right now, like Claude Code or Kiro or Spark, they need to do a lot better than this. If you want to try Opal for yourself, it is free, but unfortunately it's only available in the US right now through their Google Labs platform. So if you're in the US and you have tried Opal already, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Tell us what your experience has been so far, and most importantly, what do you think is the best use case for a tool like this? And as always, thank you for watching. If you would like to see more AI breakdowns like this one, then be sure to hit that like button underneath the video. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well. This has been Andres from BetterStack, and I will see you in the next videos.